celebrate today the first festival of Italian culture in India that will be represented by musical performances. This year marks the 700th anniversary of the death of Dante Le This cultural festival is going to give you a glimpse of all that is wonderful about it. Let's get the three continents together. delighted to welcome you to the 14th Jaipur Literature Festival protected by Detol. Our session now is supported by the Embassy of Italy in India. Divine Comedy, Dante Alighieri, Piero Boitini and Claudio Ginta in conversation with His Excellency Vincenzo Di Luca. Drawing heavily from Roman Catholic theology and philosophy, Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri is a long narrative poem divided into three parts, Hell, Purgatory and Paradise. The text and its imaginative vision of the afterlife is a masterpiece representing Dante's journey from darkness to error to the final ascent to God in Paradise. Author and literary critic Piero Boitini is a Dante scholar and is Professor Emer Emeritus of Comparative Literature at the Sapienza University of Rome, Sapienza. Academic and author Claudio Ginta teaches Italian literature at the University of Trento in Italy. He's an expert in medieval literature, the poetry of Dante and his contemporaries and pedagogy of the humanities. Together, they discuss the significance of the Divine Comedy and its verses and celebrate the life and writing of this master of words on the 700th anniversary of his death. In conversation with the Ambassador of Italy to India, His Excellency Vincenzo Di Luca, Piero Boitini is Professor Emeritus of Comparative Literature at the University of Rome Sapienza and at the University of Italian Switzerland Lugano. His most recent books in English include Looking Upwards, Stars in Ancient and Medieval Cultures, The Machine of the World, The Modern Cosmos, A New Sublime and Ten Timeless Lessons on the Classics. Claudio Ginta is full professor of Italian literature at the University of Trento, Italy. He has published many essays on medieval Italian poetry and a commentary on Dante's Alighieri's poems for the collection Meridiani Mondadori. He's currently working on a book about the Divine Comedy. Vincenzo Di Luca took office on 1st February 2016 as Director General for Cultural and Economic Promotion and Innovation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Government of Italy. After having served in the same Directorate General as Deputy Director General and Principal Director for the Internationalization of the Italian Economic System. He's serving as the Ambassador of Italy to India and Nepal since December 2019. Please do remember to comment by typing it in the comment section. Ladies and gentlemen, Divine Comedy, Dante Alighieri, Piero Boitani and Claudio Ginta in conversation with His Excellency Vincenzo Di Luca. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much for joining this event and I want to thank uh, the Jaipur Literary Festival for hosting this event with us. We have organized this event in the framework of, as you've seen in the video, of the Italian Culture Festival in India 2021. I just want to introduce with an historical overview the talk with Professor Boitani and Professor Giunta, an historical overview of the life and works Dante Alighieri the most famous poet and writer of the Middle Age, author of the, one of the masterpieces of the world literature, The Divine Comedy. Dante was born in Florence in 1265 and died in Ravenna in 1321. Being born in Florence 700 years ago meant being born in one of the largest and richest cities in Europe. The nation that came to be known as Italy didn't exist back then. Italy is a relatively young country being only 160 years old. Neither was there a single Italian language. In every region, every city, different dialects were spoken that originated from Latin, the language of the ancient Roman Empire. 
Dante wrote the Commedia or the Divine Commedia in the Florentine dialect of his city in Fiorentino. And it was so successful that his native dialect ended up uh, becoming the language of writers, of cultured people, and ultimately of all Italians. Thus, when students in Italy schools are taught that Dante was the father of the Italian language, it's not exaggeration at all. Dante's life was divided in two parts by a traumatic incident, the exile. He fell victim of the political struggles that were shaking up Florence at the beginning of the 12th century and then to leave his city in 1301. He would never return. In the 20 years that followed until his death, he roamed over central and northern Italy at the mercy of the hospitality of princely courts. So Dante was no stranger to poverty, to humiliation, but exile was also the driving creative force behind his most successful works. A bit like the Irish writer James Joyce, many hundred years later, who voluntarily went into exile. The first linguistic treatise written in Italy, the De Vulgari Eloquentia, the first popular philosophical treatise, the Convivio, an important essay on politics titled The Monarchia, and most important of all, of course, the Commedia, which Dante also wrote to seek revenge, to defend himself from the accusation of uh, 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 his fellow uh, citizens had made against him and to name those who were guilty of the political crisis going on in Italy at that time. Dante vision of the world was of a European of his time. He was Christian, knew the Bible by heart, as well as texts by church fathers like St. August Augustine and Christian philosophy uh, of masters like Tommaso d'Aquino. His faith was rock solid, and this reflects clearly in the Commedia, which is a journey into the hereafter that ends with the vision of God. The heart was for him and for his contemporaries at the center of, universe, of the universe, and the sun and all other planets revolved around it. He had no doubt that man was at the center of all divine creation. Reading uh, the Commedia means returning to a spiritual world that is very different from ours, a world untouched by modern anxiety and doubts. It also means coming into contact with a genius infinitely unlike us, that is archaic and foreign to our idea of the ideal universe. And because of this, in my opinion, in our opinion, reading the Commedia is one of the most interesting intellectual experience and adventure that someone from our time can undertake. Comedy was inspired also, as inspired also in India, several authors, from Vanyo Padiaia to Orobindo and Tagore. The Divine Comedy has been recently translated into Bengali by Gangopadhyay in 2011. So, my first question to our two speakers, Professor Boitani and Professor Junta, do we still read the Divine, Divine Comedy all over the world? Um, I, I wish I was there, but I mean, there are many problems around the world, so I can, I'm not allowed to travel. And so I'm going to just give you just a, a quick idea of why we, we are supposed, we should read the Divine Comedy. But in my, okay, in my, in my case, I guess I'm, I'm privileged and biased because I, I'm Italian and I live in the very same neighborhood in which Dante used to live. So if you, if you check uh, slide two, please, um, there's an image of my neighborhood uh, in Florence uh, from the 17th century. And this was the neighborhood in which Dante many years before used to live. And the next slide is a picture I, I took from my apartment of the area, Porta San Piero is the name of, the, of the, this part of town, St. Peter's door, in which Dante used to live. So I live there, that's why maybe I feel, uh, I, I felt obliged to read and study Dante. But to, to give a, a better answer to the question uh, that the ambassador asked, uh, so why do we read, why do we still read the Divine Comedy? Um, I guess a 
a short and sincere answer is that um, we are going to die. Um, um, one understands that, one realizes that uh, when he's, when he's in, in his 40s or 50s, um, when you start seeing people around you uh, dying, people you loved, relatives, friends, and, and so on. I don't think this, the perception of this um, unconvenient detail of, Italy, of, it, of, of, of life uh, is, is strong enough when you're young. But when you grow old, you start understanding that you are going to die and you see yourself growing old. Um, and so you, you, you feel the urge of, to, to be more serious. There's a wonderful poem by a great British poet called Philip Larkin. Uh, and in, in, in this poem, Larkin says, I quote, someone will forever be surprising a hunger in himself to be more serious. So going old, you get more serious. You don't want to spend, waste time in, uh, with the last crime novel, reading the last crime novel, or reading the last romance novel. You don't want to spend time on the surface. You, you, you seek death. Well, Dante's, Dante and the Divine Comedy are always very serious and very deep. Um, that means that the problems that arise in the Divine Comedy, the questions that are asked and answered uh, in the Divine Comedy are the fundamental problems and questions of, of human life, uh, such as, does God exist? What happens after death? What is the worst of sins? What is the most important virtue? Um, how should we live? Uh, will the ones who do not believe in God go to heaven? Will we see again the people we love in the afterlife? And so on. So serious questions. And when we are my age, when you are my age, you start uh, paying attention to those questions. Um, contemporary novelists do not ask themselves these questions. These are questions that are found mostly in the, in the sacred books of the great religions, such as the Bible or the Koran. Um, in fact, the Divine Comedy has something to do with these great books, with the difference that Dante has um, that the talks about these crucial topics uh, of human life in a wonderful way. Um, and I cho I've chosen some uh, lines that show the, the prove the points. The point: we are in the middle of paradise. So next slide, please. We are in the middle of, of paradise, and Dante uh, has asked some souls if they will rise with the body after the final judgment. Can, can we show the next slide, please? And the souls Dante asked, had uh, uh, talked to, uh, yes. Uh, these souls have answered yes, they will rise with the body. And then he asks, Dante asks, if the light emanating from their soul will not be too strong for their eyes, for their eyes made of flesh. And the answer of these souls is, uh, the one we can read together. I, I'm going to read the Italian version uh, in order to give you the sound of Italian language, and you can read the translation. Ma sì come carbon che fiamma rende e per vivo candor quella soverchia, sì che la sua parvenza si difende, così questo folgor che già ne cerchia fia vinto in apparenza dalla carne che tutto di la terra ricoperchi. Ne potrà tanta luce affaticarne nor will we tire when faced with such bright light. So the big light will not mm, damage the, 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 the eyes of the people who will born again after death. Che gli organi del corpo saranno forti a tutto ciò che potrà dilettarne. Tanto mi parve subito, subiti e accorti, e l'uno e l'altro coro a dicer amme, che ben mostrar disio di corpi morti. Forse non pur per loro, ma per le mamme, per li padri e per gli altri che fuor cari, anzi che fosse sempiterne fiamme. So I don't know if it's the same for you, but I, I, I don't care so much for the soul after my death. Uh, I want to see again the body of the people I loved. Uh, and Dante had the same feeling, the same desire. Um, and this is very touching also because he did not have any doubt about the, the fulfilling of his desire. He, was, he, he strongly believed in God and in afterlife. I have many doubts. So I guess we could call mine uh, a wishful thinking in my case.
but it's still very touchy, maybe even more, uh, because we, in a strange way we are connected, me and Dante, longing for a, a future afterlife made of flesh and blood, and not only of soul. So this is my short answer to the question, why should we read, or why people should read again uh, the Divine Comedy? Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Professor Giunta. I don't know if we can uh, have the connection with uh, Professor Boidani, otherwise I go on with another question to Professor Giunta, and the question could be around uh, the two, three things to be kept in mind when approaching the Divine Comedy in order to understand it better, Professor Giunta. Yeah, um, I prepared, I just prepared a couple of slides just to give you the, the, the general idea about the life and works of Dante. So let's start with the basic data, uh, basic data a reader should keep in mind to understand something about, about Dante. So please, can, you, can we show the next um, slide? Um, yes, this is life in short, very short. Uh, Dante uh, was born in Florence in 1265. Um, in 1274, he first, he, he first saw the lady of his life. Uh, she was not Beatrice, uh, uh, was not her, uh, her wife, in fact, one was not her girlfriend, in fact. She was just an image. She was just a girl he, he saw in Florence when he was young, and he fell in love with her when he was 18. So the, at the second appearance of Beatrice, Dante falls in love, 12, um, 1283. In the early 90s, he marries Gemma Donati. Um, love and marriage were not things that went together always. So he was in love with Beatrice, but he was forced to, 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 to marry this Gemma Donati, who was the daughter of a very, very powerful man in Florence. And at the end of the 13th century, he takes part in Florence political life, um, and he becomes priore. It means one of the most important uh, political uh, figure in, in, in Florentine life. Um, in 1301, as the ambassador said before, he, would con he was condemned to exile and he will never return back to Florence. So he will spend 20 years abroad, out of Florence, uh, trying to, 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 to survive, basically, because it was, he was very poor and he, had to, to, he felt the urge to, 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 to study and to write, and it was uh, absolutely not, not easy for him. Um, he spent most of, of his time in center and northern Italy, between Tuscany, Emilia, Veneto, um, and finally, in the second part of the, of the, of the second decade of the 14th century, he settles down, he settles down in Verona and then in Ravenna, and he, he died in Ravenna in 1321. Um, next slide, slide please. Uh, we're gonna just give a short, a short idea, quick idea about the, the main works of Dante. Um, Dante is not only the Divine Comedy. Uh, Divine Comedy is the work every student in Italy studies, but it, it was important, it is important also for a series of uh, less known um, works. The Vita Nova, The New Life, is the first Italian autobiography. Um, in the 20th century, uh, everybody writes an autobiography, but it was something very uncommon at Dante's time. Um, then he wrote, he wrote uh, a series of lyric poems, the Rime, sonnets, ballads, canzoni, on many topics like love, politics, ethics. And then uh, uh, the most important uh, Italian uh, language treatise, the De Vulgar Eloquentia, uh, a philosophical treatise, the Convivio, uh, a treatise on politics, the Monarchia. So a large range of works in a very short period of time. And then the Divine Comedy. And how can, can we define uh, the, the Divine Comedy, was that the philosophical Christian vision of mankind's eternal fate. Uh, this is a very, very common uh, definition of the Divine Comedy. Or maybe a symbolic dream, or simply a journey to the afterlife, or whatever else. It's very difficult to, to, to define, to give, to, to, to put a name on the Divine Comedy, because it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a journey to afterlife, it's a judgment about the earth, it's a philosophical poem, it's many things together. Next slide, please. Uh, I just want to quote the first lines of the Inferno, the, the first lines of the Divine Comedy. 
these are the lines that every student in school learn by, uh, learns by heart. So every Italian uh, more or less knows these lines by heart and, uh, and uh, they are beautiful. So yeah, I'm, go I'm going to read them in Italian um, and you can follow in English. Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la diritta via era smarrita. Hai quanto a dir qual era e cosa dura esta selva selvaggia e aspra e forte che nel pensiero rinnova la paura. Tante amare che poche più morte, ma per trattare del ben chi vi trovai, dirò delle altre cose chi vo scorte. So Dante is, is in the middle of a, a forest, a wood, is lost, is scared, is dark, and, uh, and this is the starting of the journey. Um, uh, this journey will, will, will take Dante through the inferno, so the, the place in which people are punished for their sins, then the purgatorio, uh, kind of a temporary inferno, uh, and then the paradise, the heaven. And uh, Dante will meet lots of people during the, the journey. And first of all, Virgil, the great Latin poet of the first century before Christ, who, who will be his guide until the, the end of purgatorio. At the end of purgatorio, uh, Dante will meet Beatrice, the lady he was in love when he was young, and Beatrice will take him to the heavens. Um, this is the starting of the poem. These are very famous lines, so if you see an Italian, you can ask him to, 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 to recite these lines by heart. He should be, he or she should be able to. And the ending of the Divine Comedy is in the following slide. Slide, please. Next slide. Next, please. No, okay, oh yeah, okay, this one is just to give you an idea of how a medieval manuscript was made. This is the starting, this is the first page of a 14th century, no, no, okay, this one is good, okay, a 14th century uh, manuscript. Um, and you can see in the, in the little image um, there, you can see Dante with his hands like this open, and Virgil talking to him, uh, the hill uh, in which it tries that, that we, it tries to, 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 to climb, and you can see a couple of, of uh, wild animals that will uh, uh, will, will, will stop uh, Dante during his climbing. And then the, the poem starts. You can read the, you can read the first line nel mezzo del cammino di nostra vita. Um, as I was saying, this is the, the first page. Let's have a look of the last page of the Divine Comedy. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is the end of the ending of Paradiso, Heaven 33. After 100 cantos, the Divine Comedy is made, is, is three, three big chapters divided in uh, 100 cantos, 100 uh, series of lines, of verses. And, uh, and at the end of the, of the poem, uh, of, the, of, the, of the comedy, Dante sees God. So in the end, there's a happy ending. And these are the very last lines of the poem. I'm gonna read them in Italian, uh, and you can follow in English. Se non che la mia mente fu percossa da un fulgore in che sua voglia venne, all'alta fantasia qui manco possa, ma già volgeva il mio desio e il velle, si come rota, igualmente mossa, l'amor che muove il sole e l'altre stelle. So in the end of the poem, Dante can see God and his will and his desire uh, move uh, at the same pace, at the same time with the desire and the will of God. Uh, that is love. Love is another name for God. Um, coming to a, a better answer maybe of the questions the ambassador asked me, um, I, I picked up a couple of passages in the main comedy uh, that are so, for me, in my opinion, for so astonishing, astonishingly beautiful that should give the the the, the, the I mean some the people who hear me now the will the, the, the desire to read the whole poem. So if I can read um, the two the two next uh, the next two slides um, I can give you the idea of why the divine comedy is so beautiful. And uh, so next slide please. yes um, I, I chose two different passages, two different um, pieces of the comedy to give you um, 
a whole, I mean, a diff different idea of, uh, of the beauties of, the, of Dante's work. Because Dante is both a master of the detail and a master of the big vision. Uh, so I'm going to give you two examples uh, of greatness in detail and greatness in vision. This is Paradiso, Paradise 10, 10 Canto. Um, and Dante is, is in heaven, it's a, it has a big sky, dark, and he meets the souls of the saved, the saints, the, the blessed ones who live in, in paradise. And they appear to him as lights, lights uh, sparkling, shining, and singing. Um, so he, he has to describe these, these, these people, these lights, and uh, and he says what it's written in, in this line. I'm gonna read them, uh, I'm gonna read in Italian, of course. Poi si cantando, quelli ardenti soli, si fuor girati intorno a noi tre volte, come stelle vicine a fermi poli. That means uh, these, these, these souls are like lights in circle, turning around Dante and Beatrice. Donne mi parver, non da ballo sciolte, ma che s'arresti in tacite, ascoltando, finché le nove note hanno ricolte. Um, so he's comparing the circle of lights he's seeing in paradise um, around him to what? To women, not really dancing in fact, but waiting for the dance to start. Uh, I don't know if you have this, if you, if you ever had this, this, this feeling of this, this experience. You are dancing, you're on the dance floor and the music stopped and you are waiting for the music to start again. And, uh, and I always thought this was crazy because this guy is in the middle of paradise. He sees um, the, the saints, the blessed ones, the souls of heaven. And the image, the idea that comes to his mind is the idea, the most familiar, realistic, uh, Florentine uh, view. Uh, a bunch of women dancing, or not dancing, but waiting on the dance floor that the music starts again. So Professor Giunta, since, uh, since yeah. Professor Boitani now has connected with us, uh, yeah. uh, I would like to also ask uh, his view about uh, uh, why today divine comedy is still a universal kind of uh, uh, work and uh, thing. Professor Boitani. Well, the easiest uh, answer is that um, uh, Dante speaks of us, to us, basically. Um, he's not talking about things that are so remote from us. Uh, if you read the Inferno, for instance, um, the basic feelings there, uh, you know, love, death, politics, uh, betrayal, um, the journey into the unknown, in the case of Ulysses, these are all things that are still with us. In some way, we can even say that Dante has contributed effectively, if not exclusively, to our creation. Uh, this is something that is often said of Shakespeare, uh, see Harold Bloom. But in fact, Dante has given uh, a, an absolutely fundamental impulse to that creation of modernity. Um, characters like uh, Ulysses or Francesca and so on, these are uh, archetypes of what we then became, as it were, or perhaps what we were always. Um, so this is the reason. And one doesn't really need uh, to have this enormous um, medieval, theological, Catholic construction to read those episodes. Uh, yes, they are part of that view of the world, undoubtedly, and we would understand them better if we know that stuff. But in fact, it's not necessary to, to know that. Uh, you can tell the story of Francesca and Paolo to anyone in the world, it's a, it's a story of adultery. Uh, two uh, in-laws who fall in love because of reading a story, and that's absolutely normal, as it were, um, the beginning of adultery, and, and then are killed by the husband. So it's, you know, it's absolutely uh, perfectly um, every day, as it were. So, and then there is the other side, what Claudio was talking about now, of uh, being able to describe experiences 
which we almost never actually have the view of the absolute the 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 actual trying to render what what um, was once called the the uh, struggle for the absolute the, the absolute aringo which he calls it in paradiso too in fact the aringo the enormous agon fighting against the uh, the unspeakable as it were dante tries and although he says many times so oh, my memory is lost is fading away my words are uh, also uh, lacking now and so on then he goes to the very end uh, which is quite an enterprise because nobody in christianity had ever succeeded in doing so not even saint paul uh, saint paul said in one of his epistles that he was uh, you know, taken to the third heaven, and he could not say what he had heard or seen. And Dante quotes that bit in Paradiso 1, and then he says, but, in fact, I will, and does, uh, for 33 cantos of Paradiso go on like that. This uh, passage that I've chosen, also from Paradiso, I noticed that both Claudia and I had chosen mostly passages from the Paradiso which is supposed to be the most difficult cantica of the three, but it is the most challenging, in fact. Um, but you see here, Dante is addressing the readers uh, with a few classical images. O voi che siete in picceretta varca, desiderosi d'ascoltar, seguiti dietro al mio legno che cantando varca, tornate a rivederli i vostri liti, non vi mettete in pelago, che forse perdendo me rimarreste smarriti. L'acqua che io prendo giammai non si corse. Minerva spira e conduce mi Apollo e nove muse mi dimostran l'orse. Voi altri pochi che drizzaste il collo per tempo al pan degli angeli, del quale vive si qui ma non se vienza tollo, metter potete ben per l'alto sale vostro navigio, servando il mio solco dinanzi all'acqua che ritorna equale, dinanzi all'acqua che ritorna equale. So you can follow me, you very few people who have already uh, eaten uh, the bread of angels, the grace of God, then you can follow me uh, and in your, uh, in your ships, uh, which will follow my wake, servando mio solco, dinanzi all'acqua che ritorna equale, before the water gets smooth again behind me behind us. And it's quite an extraordinary image uh, which recalls suddenly, and this is my second passage, recalls in fact the end of, uh, of Ulysses' story in Inferno 26, when the water closes in on the building, has been sunk, as a matter of fact, by uh, the, the um, uh, well, whirlwind coming from the mountain of purgatory. There are some illustrations here. Uh, they are 15th century, basically. This, as you can see, is a large illustration from uh, manuscript Yates Thompson, uh, 36 in London, the Jewish Library, uh, illustrated by Giovanni Di Paolo. And you see the entire complex, Dante and Beatrice flying up, and then you see behind the little bark the ship. Uh, it, it, it takes the entire uh, sequence of the two cantos. And if we go further um, to the next image, now this is Ulysses's death. And it's interesting, I chose an English translation uh, which is far from modern. It is the famous Carey translation, that is the translation that the Romantics used. Coleridge, Shelley, Byron, Keats, uh, everyone, Tennyson afterwards, uh, all were in love with this particular translation, which you will see is in blank verse without rhyme. Noi ci allegrammo, says Ulysses, when he comes, when he views uh, the mountain, e tosto tornò in pianto, che della nuova terra un turbo nacque, e percosse del legno il primo canto. Tre volte il fe girar con tutte l'acque, alla quarta levar la poppa in suso, e la prora ire in giù, come altrui piacque. 
finché il mare fu sopra noi richiuso. The sea, the sea closes in over them. Uh, of course, this is a shipwreck, whereas that in Paradiso, it's not a shipwreck. But the same reason, the same, so that you get these contrasts in the comedy. Uh, Ulysses' death is, in a sense, uh, the, the crowning to the failure of an enterprise, uh, because Ulysses is he who goes beyond the Strait of Gibraltar, he who uh, discovers America uh, coming from Europe or so Renaissance uh, poets and, uh, and interpreters took it to mean, so that uh, you, you see it's a, it's a condemnation of entire civilization in a sense. And, uh, but Dante has plays on these things uh, throughout the comedy. So we go from Inferno 26 to Paradiso 2, and then the next one, see this illustration, this is also early 15th century, in the Vatican, and you can see it's quite crude but beautiful with the ship, uh, the, the tree, the mast uh, broken, and the heads of the of the crew uh, in the sea together with fish. Professor Boidani, Professor Boidani, yes. since we have 10 minutes now to the end of this session, and uh, mm -hmm. after two such inspiring and stimulated contribution to the debate, uh, I would like to ask the organizer if we have received any question from the audience. Yes. yes, we have a question here. Uh, the first is Dante's idea has been used or alluded to in various show books, movies, how far do you think they have done justice in preserving his ideas? And will those philosophical questions hold their sanctity when remodeled? Please, I ask now Professor, maybe Junta, to start to uh, uh, answer this question, and then Professor... Sure, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, very good question. Um, I know there are many... Mm, well, there, there's, for instance, there's a manga version, a, Japan, a Japanese manga version of, of the Divine Comedy, uh, and it's pretty entertaining and, and nice, and, um, and nice to read, in fact. And there are movies. Peter Greenaway made some very good movies about, uh, I mean, taking, taking, inspiration, taking inspiration from the Divine Comedy. Um, well, my opinion is that if you want to get close to Dante, you have to read him. There are no short ways. There, there's no... Uh, substitution, substitution there no, there's no surrogate. You have to read the text because it's so full of thought, so full of um, wonderful lines that if you just get the juice uh, of the plot of the story, you don't get enough. So you can read the, the, the manga versions, you can read the comics, you can watch the movies, but if you want to really have a real Dantesca experience, you have to read the text. Um, exactly for, because Dante is saying something very particular and very, very uh, determined, very precise. And, uh, and every version that is not a written version of the Divine Comedy, the text itself, uh, in, a, in a way betrays the contents of the Divine Comedy. So I'm sorry, but there's no shortcut. You have to read the poem, all of it. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Giunta. And uh, last question maybe to Professor Boitani. Which is, in your view, the definitive Eng English translation of the Divine Comedy? <laughs> this, I think, is a question that interests so much all our audience here. Thank well, you. Well, um, there is no definitive edition. Um, as you can see, the ones I projected were three different ones. Um, the first one was from Robin Kirkpatrick, a penguin, a few years ago only. Um, then the last one was Alan Mandelbaum, American, uh, also not very long ago, about 20 years ago, uh, more, 30, let's say. And then the third translation was Henry Francis Carey, which is about 200 years old. Um, a, a translation of the Divine Comedy or of some parts of the Divine Comedy comes out in English every year uh, in some parts of the English-speaking world. So... 
no definitive translation. There will always be a better one or a better one for some things and, uh, you know, a better one for something else. For instance, there is a, a, a translation of Inferno only, and the poet died, by an Irish poet, quite a renowned Irish poet, called Carson. Uh, he published only the Inferno, very good, and then he died. So that's it, he never went on. But there are bits and pieces by American poets, uh, by every, you know, lots of people have tried. Seamus Heaney tried not the entire comedy. He wanted to, at one point, he dreamt of translating the entire comedy, and then he said, I'm not up to it. So he, <laughs> he stopped. Thank uh, you, it, Professor Boitani. I think we have still a, a time for a last question we received. Why is that the eighth circle is the one where Dante spends so much time? What would the Dante's political view be like in today, modern times? Not easy to <laughs> elaborate in such a, a good one. few That's minutes good. of time. Please, yeah. Professor uh, uh, Boitani or Professor Junta, uh, as you like. <laughs> well, <clears throat> he was a pretty reaction <laughs> in his own time. He lost Please. He, lost he was a reactionary in his own time. Um, you know, he advocated for the empire and the empire was crumbling apart. He did not see the national states taking, taking place or rising. Um, so I don't know what he would be today, um, but uh, uh, he would always strive, I think, for the good of the people. This is what he says in the in the monarchia, you know, that the the the, uh, the government, the people who rule, um, whether it be the emperor or the pope or somebody else, uh, should strive to defend that ideal for us, uh, you know, the subjects or the citizens. Um, this is the main thing. Now, whether he would be in favor of uh, Mario Draghi, the present prime minister, just uh, a week as prime minister, or the former one, or the future one, Italy, as you know, changes prime minister every year or every six months, um, I don't know. But, you know, whether he will be left wing or right wing or centre, uh, I, I have no idea, but I think... Professor Junta? Uh, he would be, I mean, first of all, he was, he was a Christian, so uh, there are things that he would not let go. I mean, like, uh, like a divorce or abortion or so on. So on. So he was a Christian. So quite on the right wing, I would say. Um, mm. It's a question, a question about the, the eighth circle. Why, do, why does Dante spend so much time there? Because this, the eighth circle called Malebolge is the place where fraud is punished. And fraud has many, many faces, many ways. So every single part of the eighth circle is, um, is, is devoted to a particular face of the fraud. The human beings are are fraudulent, and, and Dante knew all ways, all the faces of this uh, terrible sin. That's why. Thank you very much. I, I think we have had a very, very interesting, I hope, for the audience, for everybody, discussion. But uh, first, at the end, we will invite all of you to read Comedia, Divine Comedia. It's the best way to really know much more about Dante thought, Dante art, Dante poetry. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you, Piero Boitini, Claudio Ginta, and Your Excellency Vincent. an enlightening conversation. We thank the Embassy of Italy in India for supporting this session. We thank our celebration partner, Diageo. Thank you all for watching and being such a great audience. Do stay logged on and continue to watch the amazing sessions that have been specially curated for you. This festival is protected by Detol.